I can always get stared down by security. I, don't, I definitely don't look threatening, but um, like when I look around a room, I like I, I understand the security guard's job because I do the same thing too. I you just stare at people, and whoever stares back at you probably has a problem. And I don't break eye contact and everything. So I was just feeling like the devil was trying to take me out of it a little bit. And then um, I started talking to Jesus and I was just like, what is the deal here, man? Like, cause like normally you, you know, you attach your money to something and then you go and you set aside a t- time aside and you're like, this is for you, Jesus. I'm going to grow, you know, teach me, mold me. I'm the clay, you're the potter. And, um, it was just really cool because God wanted me to know that that was like that, that season of my life was done. Um, not, not conf- like specifically Jesus image and stuff like that, because every time they have a conference, we want to go. And really what we're actually going for was the fellowship. Like we weren't going for the conference because we ended up skipping out on a lot of the conference because we would wake up in the morning and uh, my friend Tiffany would be reading the Bible. And then like, I'd go sit out there too. We'd be by the pool. It's early morning in Florida. It's nice. And then we'd just be talking about Jesus. And then we just, we have worship music just always going. And it was just like, like, why are we going to this conference where they demand that you sit a certain place? And then they kind of dictate what like goes on in the room when like we're like we're very free people and it was just cool like there's nothing wrong with the way jesus image does things but um the stuff that they were teaching at this conference it to us it all seemed like surface level and it was like we're like we know that stuff like we've been we've been running in that stuff for like a year and a half now but you also have grace for the people who don't know that stuff that are there at that conference that are like wow wow and it's just like yeah I thought everybody knew that. It was just cool. Um, but there was one song in there. Um, I forget what it's called, but it was just like, it was, a, it was an older song, and he was talking about um, Darling of Heaven Crucified. And I was like, that's a new one to add to prayer right there. Because <laughs> he's, he's the Darling of Heaven Crucified. Like, he was, he was made man. It's just got me to cycle the gospel through my head again and like even as, even as, even as i'm talking about it it's just the darling like like he can i can just repeat myself like sometimes in my prayer i'm just saying darling darling of heaven and i could just i could just be i could just be on that forever and it's just because there's so much that i attach to speaking to jesus you know you guys hear me say i love you i worship you but it's just like when you when you say that and you have that conversation to god are you pulling it from here or are you pulling it from here? Because I can say I love you. I could stand up here for an hour and a half just having my eyes closed and saying it's only you. I love you. I worship you. So it's like when you talk to Jesus, like what are you attaching to it? And where are you attaching it from? Are you are you are you going through words that you heard? Or because it's cool to like have a revelation or um of the darling of heaven and it came from a song and then to incorporate it. I must incorporate it from here and not from here. Not because it's like, oh, this is what you say. It's like, no, this is what I feel. Is he your darling? Is he your lover? Is he your king? Is he beautiful to you? And like, he's a, he's a man. So for a man to be like, he's beautiful. Like, do you, do you feel that in your heart that he is that? And once you can get a revelation of that, just like that liquid love that just overtakes you, that nothing else matters, but just talking to him life will be a lot better. <laughs> and we were, uh, I was sitting, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of ramble here. Um, I'm not really following my notes, but, um, I was sitting in the airport and, um, the way that flights got scheduled, I don't know why I have Cindy pick out my flights. It's always, it's always just something. And I, and I love her to death. She's like, she is, she's doing the best, but, um, she got me a plane ticket and actually she surprised me because we didn't really have money for me to go to Florida at that time. And, uh, she went and she's like, I'm going to go work. And I'm like, kind of looking at her money. I'm like, well, we got like enough money or whatever. And she's surprised me and said, Hey, I bought your tickets to Florida. It's like, you mean you're going to let me go from Wednesday to Saturday with my friends to Florida and you're paying for it. Like, cause she, like our money's together, but when she goes and works, like she can, she can keep that money. Like just cause she's responsible with it and stuff. I'm not really responsible with money sometimes. <laughs> Who, what doesn't Lonnie say he, he's good at teaching that? Where's Lonnie? He's probably out there. Lonnie, can you give me some hints on finances later? <laughs> Thank you. 
Not my wife, but me, because if you tell my wife, then she'll enact it, and then I won't get to do the easy stuff. So, um, Yeah, so she bought me my, my ticket to Florida, and she ended up, um, I started asking her information about it, and she was like, yeah, I bought you a ticket on Spirit. Thank you, babe. <laughs> I did, like they, I always make a joke that Spirit still has the ashtrays and the and the seat rests because that's how like old like the seats don't recline. You can't even like sometimes airplanes have the headrests and they have a screen and internet and Spirit's like, you want to buy any snacks? And I'm like, buy snacks? I bought a plane ticket. Give me my give me my my drink and my food, lady. That's the end of our this relationship. You don't I don't have to get out more money. I've already paid you guys enough. Then they try to charge you for bags and stuff, but I pack light. But it was like I was flying Spirit, and um, I didn't get to fly with my friends because we bought tickets at different times, and I didn't think I was going, and then my wife surprised me. So I had completely different flights than them, and um, the only flight from Orlando to Kansas City was at like 8 o'clock at night. So my friends got to the airport at 8 o'clock in the morning, so... I got to sleep in a little bit in the Airbnb and take an Uber and stuff like that. But um, I had to be in the airport for like a really long time. And that's okay with me because I love airports and I love airport people. And I just love the, I love just the randomness of it. Like you're, you can fly in from anywhere. You can be from anywhere. You could be, your job title can be anything. You could be in a hard time. You could be in a good time. Just stop and talk to somebody at an airport and you'll hear a life story. And it's like, it's like going, like to me, it's like going to the library and then you pick up a book and you read it. Cause it's like, there's all these people that have nothing to do but wait. And I love people. And um, I was sitting down and there was um, this, this older lady, older lady, older gentleman, probably about 70, 70s. And um, I'm kind of, <laughs> is it? Did I say it? Is that wrong? Is that bad? Older. How do, how should I phrase that then? What's the most? <laughs> what's most? I mean, to these guys, I'm old, so I don't know. <laughs> and how do I phrase it? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, these people that were older than me came and and were sitting down, and um, she brings out a quilt and she starts um, doing it, and then they start talking and having good conversation husband's trying to get in on it and I'm just kind of minding my own business and like um there's some times where I just like don't feel like talking to people and I'm just kind of just in my own head and then um she looks down at my shirt and I bought sometimes I buy shirts I buy two of them just because I like my wife will definitely steal it so and actually when she steals a shirt she like cuts the neck and cuts the sleeves and I'm just like how am I supposed to wear that now so I know better that every time I buy a shirt that I think is cool she thinks it's cool too so I need to buy two so I was sitting there and I was wearing my other shirt like this and it says, he is risen. And then um, the lady was like, oh, I love your shirt. And then I was just like, okay, now I have to pay attention to this conversation. I've just been brought into this conversation. So that's just God, you know, he was kind of nudging me to, to speak up or whatever. And sometimes I feel like I'm rude and I'm dominating a conversation or something like that. So sometimes I just really don't feel liberty to go for it. And that's why he's gracious to have them open that door. And um, we started talking, and I was just like, oh, yeah, he is risen. And then, like, as I said it, I'm just like, he is. He is risen. He forever will be risen. He's alive. He's a human. He's up there. He's sitting next to God. Like, he's breathing right now. He is risen. And I just got, like, even now, it's just like, that's the another revelation of the gospel, just some he is risen, just three words, and it just, just pumps me up and gets me on fire. And then um, I started talking to them, and um, she was like, oh, I, I love Jesus too. Um, I'm a Catholic. I have been my whole life. And I'm just like, oh, you are? That's so awesome. And um, I just started to tell her that. Um, and I was just like, yeah, I give messages sometimes. Um, you know, I'm involved in a couple different youth groups. We got some ministry. And she was like, well, tell me what you preach on. I would, I would love to hear a little bit of it. And then like this lady's on the edge of her seat and this guy's on the edge of his seat. And, Cause it's like two seats in front, two seats right here. So I kind of look around and then there's another guy that goes like, and he like leans back and I'm just like, I see you, Jesus. I see you. And I said, well, um, 
basically when I when I inter, interact with people, I find a lot of people that are church hurt that are that are hurt by the church. And um, I've shared this example a lot, but it's just for the sake of the testimony and anybody who hasn't heard it. Um, I, I deal with a lot of people who are church hurt and they've been hurt by the church and um, you don't know what the church did to me and can you believe this? And they want to like go off and tell me what the church does to them or have done to them and the way they feel about the church. I walked into this church, nobody said hi, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then it's just like, um, I like to stop them right there before they can spew any more hurt that they've had. And then I say, hey, 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 here's what I'm gonna do. I want to apologize on behalf of the church because man did that, not God. And then she was just, yeah, she was just kind of like, okay. So I said, hey, on behalf of the church, I apologize. And then it was just like, that's like a softening up. The Catholic lady um, wasn't necessarily the one, but it was like this one that was sitting right here. And um, and I got to tell her a little bit about my message. And then I said, well, when I give a message, um, normally the first thing I like to do is I like to talk about religion. And she's like, oh, good. And I was just like, yeah. And I was just actually the, the really, really cool thing that um, people don't realize is that um, God doesn't like religion. And she was like, and I was like, and here's why. And I was like, man-made religion. Um, and I know you said you're a Catholic, and I don't want to talk anything bad about Catholics, but um, I grew up Presbyterian, and um, I, was, I was a very religious person. Um, so if any time you ever have to talk to somebody about something they're going through, try to relate on your side. It says, like, hey, I'm not better than you. Hey, I'm not preaching down to you. I'm not even preaching at you. I'm just loving you and talking to you. And I got to tell her that, you know, and I, want, I really wanted, like, for the Catholic thing, I just wanted to, it just, you know, it wasn't right time. If it was somebody else, it would have been like, we don't pray to Mary. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, there's just so many, so many things there. I won't go on that. But I was just telling her that, it, that it's not about a religion because God, God didn't, he didn't send Jesus down for a religion. He didn't send Jesus down so you could, you could start, like, this establishment and stuff like that. It, he started it because he wants a relationship with you. And she was like, what? And I was just like, dude, you've been going to Catholic, you've been going to church this whole time. And it's just cool, these revelations that, that we get to grab onto, that some people are just, you can go to church for all of your life and not get that Jesus is a relationship, that he is somebody that you speak to, that he's somebody that you can t- tangibly love and give yourself to. And it's just, just to hear like, and it was just, I don't know, I just started going, just going and going, and you know how I go. It's just when I get into that thing, and I just go, and then I, next thing you know, this person's listening, that person's listening, this person's listening, and then I'm crying, she's crying, people are walking by, because, you know, like, when you, you're you're crying, and a, a lady's crying, they think you're hurting her, and all that. I don't know why I get that a lot. Like, I'm definitely not a threatening-looking guy. And then um, we were sitting there, and... Um, we had this really great conversation and I like, I got to hear some about their life and their kids. And it really got her when she was sharing stories about her life that, um, she understood what I said when I said it. And then when she started talking to me, she would change her speaking. Like it was just like, cause she received a revelation right there. That was just, it was just so simple and basic. And that's my first thing that I always go to religion, relationship, legalism, intimacy, like, that's what he desires out of you. And um, it was just really cool. And then we're sitting there, and um, we're just loving on each other, talking about cruise ships and all that. And I see this lady, and she has a sign that says, I'm trying to keep calm because I'm waiting for my soldier. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a soldier come home on, a, like, a YouTube video or anything like that. I am the biggest baby when I see that when they come and surprise their kid and then they surprise their wife and they come back from overseas and stuff like that I think it's always because I wanted that to happen because I had brothers in the military and it never happened to me so it's just like I long for it and I see it um and I just started kind of crying and then um I see this other guy and he's holding the balloon and an American flag and he's a Hispanic guy and his girl comes through the the, because this is arrivals like when the people are arriving or whatever and then he, he sees her, she sees him, drops her bag, runs, boom, jumps, holds each other, starts crying. Missed you. I love you. So glad you're here. I can't believe it. And then I just got to sit there, and I was just so emotional because all these people were so happy to see each other. And that joy that they feel is, is beautiful and it's real. And um, as I'm sitting there, I hear the Lord speak to me and he says, uh, that's what it's like when you enter the kingdom. That's what it's like when you die. 
and you're going to heaven. He's waiting there. American flag, balloons, sign. I've been waiting, you know. I've been waiting 70 years for you to get here. I've been waiting 90 years. Well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> yeah. Run. Boom. And I just couldn't stop crying. I was just like, this is so cool. And like, you know, I was just, because I, was, I was felt like I was all alone in that airport. In Orlando airport, there's just, just madhouse. And I'm just like, in the midst of all of this stuff, I'm still, I'm, he can still move on my heart in public. And I just like, let him do it. Because uh, you may think you look like a weirdo, but then you're thinking about the wrong thing. I don't have time to think about me crying and what do people think because I'm so infatuated with him that I don't have time for them. Because when he's speaking to my heart, I don't want to miss it. And when I'm in that place of presence and I feel him and he's talking to me and he says, isn't this beautiful? And he gives you a revelation. I'd never want to leave that place. I just want to sit there at your feet and never leave. I never wanted to quit. To make... You guys can all have, and you probably do, you all can have conversations like that with God, but don't get too caught up in the fear of man that you miss the love of God and the grace and the mercy and everything he has to tell you. Because trust me, when you get into that place, just try to stay there. It's, it'll be so perfect. So I'll just switch topics a little bit. Um, so when I was gone, uh, my girls got to, and I'm very bummed about this because I was going to try to get an earlier flight in, but they got to go to the rodeo in East Lynn. And my girls absolutely love, love, love the rodeo, like super love the rodeo. And um, I used to be um, hooked up with a buddy of mine in Oklahoma. He was a bareback rider. And I'd be his riding buddy. We'd go and we'd buck horses in one town. He'd call the same day and we'd go buck horses in another town. He'd end up winning two events. He's just super blessed. So the rodeo has a, a big um, thing in our heart. And then there's a neighbor kid down the street. His name is Braxton. Um, and he just got adopted. His story is one of like absolute redemption. I love it. Um, but he comes over. He's like, we, we don't have a boy. So he's our boy. And like, he's like a seventh grader, I think. Yeah, seventh grader, and uh, just respectful, loving. I mean, he's just he's just an awesome kid. Like I couldn't. There's not anybody greater than Braxton on on a kid spectrum as far as who's allowed at my house, I guess. Um, so we're at the rodeo, and we bring not we. I'm not there. I'm telling my wife's story. Um, so they're at the rodeo, and they're having fun, having fun, eating pizza, drinking chips. I think my wife brought like uh, sweet corn. And he's playing, he's playing, and then boom, he like he twists his ankle like super hard, like really bad, and he is just wrecked. Like he, his time is done. He went from overjoyed and excited to just miserable and depressed. And uh, my wife is like, you know, Braxton, what happened? He's like, oh, my stinking leg, and or no, my my ankle, and it hurts so bad I can barely walk. And then um, while my wife is telling me the story, I'm saying please end this story correctly, babe. I was like, please tell me what you did. And she was like, I laid my hands in my, I prayed. It's what we always do. And I'm like, beautiful. So she prayed for him. And then he said, thank you. And he was just like, his whole countenance changed. You know, it's just like when you're loving somebody and you're praying for him, it's not you, it's him going in. And he, um, he gets out of the truck and he goes, wow, it actually feels a little better. And then, uh, he, she, and my wife's like all the way. And he's like, no, and she was like, okay, well, thank you, God, for healing it all the way. And then by the time they got back to his house, he was, like, running into his house, like, pain, freaking free. Yeah, I know. It's just like, and, and, for, and for him to experience God, because his mom and dad tell him about God all the time. And prayer is real, Braxton. Prayer is real. You know, it's, it's a real thing, and it works. And then his mom just messages back, like, I can't believe it. Braxton just shared the story of what happened. He was hurt. He said he was hurt. He knew he was hurt. Then your wife laid hands and prayed simple. And now he doesn't hurt. And it's just like sometimes in this generation with these kids now, they, they need to see something real. They need to see something tangible. And what's cool is we have the only God that is tangible, the only God that is real, the only God that speaks to you. And 
like in this generation with with cell phones and all this stuff like we see videos we can go anywhere on our phones we can see anywhere like i can put on my vr and go like anywhere in the world and turn around and look at everything but like that's not real because i'm not there and then that's what people know about jesus is they just hear people preach about him and talk about him and you should this and you should that but once you experience god everything changes nothing's different but everything changes it all changes inside here. So praise God for Braxton. I'm just praying for that to just to hold. Okay, I'm going to read the Bible now. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 through 22. And this is the NLT. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good and stay away from evil. Always be joyful. Let's break it down. Is it hard to always be joyful? Thanks, Greg. I saw that head shake. <laughs> Is it hard to be joyful all the time, guys? I mean, come on. That, that that just seems like pretty unobtainable. Like, joyful in all things? Everything? I was uh, talking to a customer, and do you, you guys know what wire lath is? It kind of looks like chicken wire, but it's like we use it on masonry all the time. And I put it in my truck, and it was hanging out the backside. And I'm talking to a customer. Yep, job looks great. My truck is here. I turn around. Boom. Just smash my face right into wire lath. And this stuff is the, the kind of stuff that is so sharp that it cuts and you don't know you're cut. And then you do like, I absolutely don't start bleeding right away just because it's just like, ugh, I hate wire lath. But the, the embarrassing thing was it happened in front of a customer too. And it was just like, we're like midway. Yeah, your job's going to look perfect. We're going to have it great. It's all looking good. I'll, boof. Smashed my face. And I look up at him and he, and I knew it was bad because he was like, oh, he's like, like, are you Okay. And then I'm like, am I bleeding? And he's like, not yet. And then I was like, praise God. <laughs> and then I like like hopped in my truck and like it really hurt too. Um, but I like it. it was so cool. My kids were like, oh, poor dad. And they're like laying hands on me. And Eden was just like, I, I wish this didn't happen to you. Are you do you need anything? Are you okay? And then she would just like she would look at me. And then get sad and just hug on me again. I'm like, dude, I'm fine. Like, I feel good. I just look bad. And um, what was really cool is I looked at where it hit me. And I'm in, like, a lot of pain or whatever. And it just, like, struck above my eyebrows and all that kind of stuff. And the first thing I say is praise God. <laughs> and it was just like, praise God it didn't hit my eyes. Because I could have, it would have been a whole different deal because that, that'll cut your eyes and you'll be blind. Like, I could have been blind in both eyes, blind in one eye. And I used to have a generational curse on my family. My uncle is blind in his right eye. My brother's blind in his right eye, all from freak accidents. And I just about got blinded in my right eye. Praise God, that's broken off my life. The devil can't have it. It's done. You can't affect my family. And I'm glad I squashed that or else you'd be seeing a one-eyed Jesse up here probably. But I'm joyful in that because it says <laughs> be, and that's like why I kind of have to bring up an example of always be joyful absolutely it's hard to be joyful but praise god i was joyful in that circumstance like what like spanish for eyes or ojos so i'm just like praise god it didn't hit my ojos <laughs> never stop praying always be in continual conversation with god that way um i was talking to a barista at the coffee shop in holden and i was just like you always need to be having it here and then like the more conversation you have with him here the faster it'll come out here so like i can talk to somebody and while they're talking, I can hear from God, and then I can, he like, just, just there's stuff going on here that I just know is his voice, because I know his voice, I hear his voice, and I, I say what he says, and I'm confident because he's never wrong. And then the more you have this love relationship with him, the more you get to talk with him. Like, like if I could talk to Greg, and without even seeing, I could hear his voice and know his voice, just because we, we, like, we chat so often, we talk to each other, we rely on each other. Like, I know Greg's voice because we're friends like we're close to each other. I know him. I need to, you guys need to know Jesus that way. You need to know, Oh, I hear you. Boom. Just like when he was saying on I 21 or I 29 up in South Dakota, he heard God's voice. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, you were driving, right? You could have missed the exit. 
you heard it, obedient, boom. Even if you missed it, turned around, found the place. Lord, where? This guy. Okay, hey, where? That guy. And then you're there. And you get to encourage and build up because you don't know what that guy was going through. You know, he could have been just really, really down on himself and all that stuff. And you got to say, hey, remember when? Isn't that so cool? And then you got to also replicate that where you went to see your friends. Just beautiful definition of it. Thankful in all circumstances. That's also tough. But he says, always be joyful, never stop praying, and be thankful. This is God's will for you who belong to Jesus. So if I belong to Jesus, I know that I'm capable of always being joyful. I know that I'm capable to never stop praying. And I thank you, Jesus, that I can be thankful in all circumstances. We have that ability for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. If there is something that... Yeah, I'll just read the rest. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good and stay away from every kind of evil. I like the uh, test everything that is said. Test everything he says, he says, I say. Don't take my word for it. Don't replicate it just because Jesse said it. Don't replicate it because Rod said it or Greg or Nate. You guys have to see that what we're saying is true and that it's in the Bible. Test it for yourself. Hold on to what is good. Just like um, this week, Benny Hinn is at the uh, the conference, and a lot of people are like, oh, no, not Benny. Uh, nah, 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 nah. There's some good stuff that he says, and there's some stuff I might not agree with, but I'm going to take that good stuff, and I'm going to keep it. And the other stuff, I'm going to go ahead and put it up on that shelf because I don't need it. But actually, in Benny's defense, he's changed a whole bunch, man. That guy is like... He gave a fire message this last time. And I just don't get on with Benny's style. He's kind of old school and goes into old worship songs in the middle of preaching. Just takes me out of it. <laughs> Hold on to good. Stay away from evil. And don't scoff at prophecies, too. So, like, when somebody's, um, when somebody's prophetic and somebody gives you a prophetic word, um, test it. Bring it back to Jesus. Jesus, is this true? Is this what you say? And he will confirm or deny it and hold on to what is good and put away. And then when the Holy Spirit's moving, um, don't stifle it. Don't even, I mean, if, if, if the Holy Spirit is moving, like if Rod says, hey, I feel like the Holy Spirit said we should be going in this direction, you go in that direction. Because I, I do not want to be responsible for stifling the Holy Spirit. Not a one day. Because I've, I've been places where everybody else is getting lit and I'm just like, I'm just because I'm in my I'm in my head. I'm in the wrong place. I'm thinking the wrong thing. I'm not thinking about him. I'm not thinking about Holy Spirit. What do you want to do? He's like, actually, I just want you to sit there and just listen. It's like those are really fun times. So and also and and um, be joyful in everything too. Um, I saw this couple at the Lowe's and I don't remember where I was Overland Park or something. And um, I'm sitting in my truck and it's always that thing when I sit in my truck and I'm there just a little too long and I'm doing nothing. And I know that I'm not wasting my time because I know that that's what God wants me to do. I'm sitting in my truck, I feel wait a little longer, and I see this guy in a wheelchair and these, these two ladies, and they're ahead of him, and they have to wait for him to catch up. He catches up, they continue, and I'm like, cool. I was like, I see you, God, going for it. And then I get out, and I'm kind of nervous, and I like I should catch up with them. But normally when you run after somebody, they're like, oh, what the heck? And they just don't receive it very well. So I was just like... <laughs> so I'm just like, I was like, you know what? If I see him in the store, Jesus, I'll do it. How many people have said that before? How many times have I said that before? Lots of times. And God's like, okay, if you, if you see him, maybe you'll pray for him. So when you know it, they go in the store. I walk down this aisle, boom, right in front of me. And then actually they, they just pass by me and keep going. I'm like, oh, dang, man, I missed him. Just missed him. Maybe I'll see him again. Next thing you know, they come right up the next aisle. Now they're coming directly at me. And I was like, cool. I was like, all right, thank you, Jesus, because I felt that. I felt that in me and my, my chest and my stomach. And I was just like, okay. And then um, uh, I heard him speak in Spanish. And I know just a little bit of Spanish when it comes to, like, praying for somebody. So I was just like, tienes, tienes dolor, which means, like, do you have pain? And then he's like, que? I'm like, tienes dolor? Aquí? And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like he knows perfect English. So I'm just like, oh, awesome. 
I was like, okay, well, I, I feel stupid, but uh, do you have any pain in your body? And he was like, yeah. And then um, I was like, cool. Um, hey, man, I'm a Christian, and uh, when I see people that are, you know, hurt or struggling or something like that, I lay hands, and we've seen lots of people um, be healed. Um, can I pray for you? And his wife's like, oh, no, no, ah, I respect your religion. And I was like, oh, you guys aren't Christian? No, uh, we're Jehovah Witness. And I'm like, awesome. I was like, praise God for you guys. That is okay, cool. So you don't want to be healed today, that's what you're saying? And she's like, no, um, we receive our healing when when we are complete in heaven. And I'm just like, God bless you guys. Have a good day. And it's just like I just felt so hurt and for him, you know. You could be walking free right now. Instead, you're just going to, you, okay, you want to help him in the pickup all the time. You want to help him change his clothes. You want to, like, I mean, yeah, she loves him, so, yeah, she's willing to. But that's is that God's will for that guy's life? No. <laughs> he told me to get out of the truck. He told me to find him, and I found him, and I found him, and I found him. And it's just like, ugh, how do we be joyful in that circumstance? We pray for him still. God, I thank you. I thank you that, you're, that, that I'm not the first person that's going to run into him. I thank you that I'm not the, the last person that's going to run into him. I thank you that you're going to reveal your heart to them. It's just like you never know. So, like, I, I was, I'm still joyful in it because I am joyful because of obedience. And the obedience is everything. And were you just saying that too, something about obedience? And it's just like, it's everything. Because if I didn't do it, I'd just feel like... I would actually feel guilty and shameful and all that, which isn't God. It's the devil saying, how dare you not listen to the king? Don't you love him? Don't you always talk about how he talks to you and you listen? And it's just like, I don't want that conviction in my life where it's like, oh, I stifled you, Holy Spirit. I didn't listen to you. When you said go, I didn't go. I'm not worthy. <laughs> Send somebody else. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to go into... Okay. Yeah. Also, um, on the, on the beep joyful part. So I was at the airport for, um, a really long time. So my demeanor when I'm in there is definitely not like everybody else is in there because everybody else is there an hour early. There's a long line. They don't know if they're gonna make their flight. And I'm just like, just la di da, just having fun with Jesus, just talking. And just, I love people watching too. And it's like, I'm really good with like body language and I'm, I'm trying to work on lip reading. I don't know if that's a good thing because now I might be eavesdropping at some point and maybe I'll get into some gossip or something. I love you too, man. <laughs> but, um, I just like, I can just, I just notice people and like kind of what they're going through and it's fun to just sit back and watch. And, um, I'm standing in line and this lady is just, I just really don't like when people stand too close to me, like especially in like a public setting. And she's just, and I understand we're in a line and there's a lot of people you want to save space, but she's just like standing right on top of me. And she's kind of like, it's like the line's not moving and I'm not moving lady. I don't know like what, like this isn't going to make it go any faster. And she's just like talking to herself out loud. And she's like, oh, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss. It. I can't believe it. It's not even my fault. And, da, 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 da. and then I'm just like, um, it comes time for my turn in line. And this whole time, I know what God wants me to do. So it's just like, I just, and I'm, I'm not like acknowledging her or nothing like that. And then they go, next. And they look at me and go like this. And I go, eh, it's your turn. And like, she could not believe it. Like, she was just like, Wah. and then she like got what she needed. She came over and she's like, thank you so much. I mean, like, this is one person in line. And she was so grateful that I'm just like, and I got the opportunity to be that. Oh, I could be stuck at the airport all day and I could be mad and I could just be like, oh, I'm just going to, can't believe I'm here and all that. And I got an opportunity like four times to let people cut me in line. And it's just like, you don't know a greater joy of somebody who's almost late for their flight and they get to cut in front of you. Like they just love it. And then I'm just like, and then I'm wearing the he is risen shirt. So it's like, they know my, my intention, but it's just like, from me being present and realizing their circumstances, I got a chance to love them. And how do you love them? Well, all I got is this spot, and it's yours. You can have it. That's good. Especially at an airport, too, because people don't really aren't in that atmosphere, like, when they do it. And I always get jacked around at airports, too. The devil didn't want me to be here. He kept pushing it back. He canceled it. He brought it back on. And it's just like, I called Rod, and I'm like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I was like... I'm pretty sure I'll be there, but worst case scenario. Okay, I'm going to go into Galatians 6, 7 through 10. 
And it says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful from that sinful nature. But those who love to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. And at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So I want to say on this thing, um, the title I have above this um, Bible verse is... Um, be careful, careful what you plant in this season because you'll be eating it in the next. So we don't know what, you know, like when we, I was talking, having this conversation with Greg and I was thinking about um, the, the youth group that I was a part of in South Dakota and it was like, be careful what you plant in this season because you'll be eating it in the next. And now um, this was like, three, four, five years ago in that youth group. And now I'm starting to see these kids life. And some of them are going to, you know, IHOP. Some of them are going to Bible colleges. Some of them are missionaries. And I didn't see any of that growth while I was there. Like I saw them growing and I saw them loving Jesus, but I really didn't know what I was planting in that season because I was just like, oh, I'm just going to love these kids and I'm just going to be here for them. And then what you plant, I planted life in them, and life grew out of it abundantly. Like, it wasn't just me that planted in there. So, like, what are you doing in this season of your life? What are you planting? What are you going to be eating in the next season of your life? Because I only want to be sowing love, and I want to be sowing honor. I want to serve people. I want to serve God. I want to be obedient. When I plant seeds, I want them to fall on good soil. And we can't help that. That's just depending on the soil that it falls on. Don't be misled. You cannot muck the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. I love it. So if you love people, you get love in return. If you help people, you'll get help in return. If you gossip about people, you'll get gossip about in return. If you steal from people, you'll get stolen from. Live by the sword, die by the sword, kill people, be killed lie to people get lied to it all creates a sinful nature like immorality too. live in a world of immorality like that's going to affect your kids you know what i mean it's it's going to if you choose an immoral immoral lifestyle it will be passed down praise god we can break stuff off change our lives teach our kids renew their minds But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So don't get tired of doing good. Even though I didn't know, even though, like, we don't know when we plant, if there's any success in it, you don't have to see the success. Because when you plant, like, corn, you just see it, see it, see it, see it, and then it's time for harvest. But when I put that in the ground, I don't know what's going on there. I can't see it. I hope it's going to sprout, and I, I know that I did all the right things, right? And dug the hole, put two in there, covered it up, add some water. I don't know, but we don't see that increase immediately. So even though, and then that's where it says, "Don't don't grow weary in doing good." So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I would rather reap a harvest of blessing than than sin and death. I can tell you that much. So careful what you plant in this season. You'll be eating it in the next. And then right on that same that same topic, um, John 4, 36 and 38, the harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both planter and harvester alike? You know the saying, one plants and another harvests. And it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plan, others have already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. So that ties into my, my Lowe's story 
when um, I ministered to these people and I tried to pray for them and they said, no, 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 it's okay, we're Jehovah Witness. I still planted a seed. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I want to pray for you to see your body healed. Boop, I dropped it. See that person at the gas station? Hey, you know you're Jesus' favorite person today? Dropped it. And sometimes we get to harvest. It's really, really fun when it's the harvest time. And you just see saved, saved. I remember I was talking with my friends. There was a time in South Dakota when I just went through a season of just baptizing people. It was just like, it was just easy. It was just like their their hearts were soft. They were pliable. It's because somebody planted on that field and planted on that field. And I walked into that mile that was ready to harvest. So when you minister to somebody, we, we can't feel like we did a bad job if they said no, because they, like I said before, they didn't say no to you. You're not asking them to come into your kingdom. You're not asking them to come to your house. <laughs> You're asking them to, to have a relationship with Jesus. And I can't, I, I can feel bad for them, but I can't feel bad for how I performed because the, what I performed was obedience. And we don't know either. Like, and sometimes you actually get to harvest the seed that you planted. You know, there's, it could be somebody that calls you five years later and remembers how much, okay, I'm going to call, I'm going to call Jesse now. Jesse, hey, I'm ready. Lead me to Jesus. Absolutely. Praise God. Or, you know, like Rod could be working on somebody for like 20 years, and then they come and meet Greg, and Greg just says something simple as, have you ever heard the gospel like this? And it's just the same thing Rod's been saying, but it's time for harvest because his heart's ready because it's been planted and watered. And then when you do plant that seed, I view watering as following up with that person. Being, doing discipleship with that person. How are you? How are you today? How's your heart? Tell me about it. Tell me about your week. Was it fun? Was it exciting? Did you do something? What did God do? And then if they're not necessarily on God, you can find points in their life where God moved, and then you can give them an example. Hey, that's God. That's I see God moving in that. And we actually got that opportunity because um, my sister-in-law, Cindy's sister, is... Um, She's married, so Steve is the brother-in-law. They're both in the military. And then Cindy's little sister has just graduated high school, and she wants to go into the military. And she's living with um, Steve and Samaria, which are Cindy's uh, sister and brother-in-law. And she is, you know, she's on the fence. She says, hey, I want to join the Marine Corps. And I'm like, just like a Martinez. Like, you, you just want to be, like, the most biggest, baddest thing out there. And I was just like, we're all trying to talk her out of it. Like, just join the Army or the Air Force. I mean, like, the Marines are sleeping in the the ditch. The Army's in tents, and the Air Force are in hotels. I mean, like, come on now. Probably the same paycheck, too. And so she decides that she's – and then uh, Stephen's in the Army, too. So it's just he knows all about the Army, and he can help her out and stuff. So I just feel – we all feel safer if she's just in that atmosphere or that realm. I don't know nothing about the military, so I can't really speak to it. Um, so she signs up, and then she's going to get sworn in, and, and Stephen actually gets to swear her in. And then this whole time, you know, me and Steve are just pouring into her and, you know, pray about it. What does Jesus say? And we're just talking. And then they go to sign the papers, and they realize that the dates are wrong, and she was supposed to sign it like last week. Therefore, her contract is invalid, and she can't get the military police job that they promised her because that's already been fulfilled because nobody filled the spot and they filled it and now it's not hers. And they say, well, we can type up a new contract. You can sign it today still and still get sworn in, but I'm just going to let you know you're going to have a random job. And then she was like, unacceptable. She was like, that is not why I signed up for this. I, I, I would have went to the Marines if I wanted a random job. I, went, I chose this branch because you specifically had what I wanted. And then she started crying. Steve was freaking out. I mean, they just weren't in a good place. And they said, uh, okay, okay, hold on. Let's let me see what we can do for you. And then they come back about 20 minutes later and they say, okay, I think we got it figured out. I think we got everything figured out. Um, You do have a change in jobs, but I'm telling you this job's hard to get and a lot of people want it. And then she was like, okay, what is it? And it was a dog handler. Like she loves dogs. Like she is like, she wants to train dogs. She wants to groom them. She like, she loves dogs. 
And then they just started laughing, like holy laughter, because it's just one of those you've got to be kidding me moments. Because um, the way it was explained to me, and I don't know exactly how it works, um, but like if you want to be a detective, you have to be like a patrol officer for like two years or something. So you have to pay some time to get the easy fun job. And then um, like and the dog dog handling, like instead of going to morning runs, you go and feed your dog and you take your dogs on. Like your your life is all about that dog. And it's just like, what? a blessing for my sister-in-law to be protected in that kind of atmosphere to where she's a military police. No, thank you. Dog handler. Yes. I see you, Jesus. That's where it's at. But the crazy thing is, is like, that is like the last thing that anybody would expect somebody to get a job for in that atmosphere, especially being it's your, like your first, you're just signing up. So I heard um, someone, uh, Stephanie Grexinger, she's a singer. She's really good. Um, and she said something that it's like one of those one-liners that hit so hard for me. She said, Satan dines on what we don't give the Lord. So if in, you're supposed to be obedient in every area of your life and anything that you keep for yourself, like I said last time I was here, that one room extra like Satan's going to dine on that. So if you keep five rooms, he's dining on it. If you keep one room, he's dining on it. So whatever we don't give to the Lord, Satan devours it. You don't give your kids to the Lord, what's going to happen? He's going to devour it. You don't give your life to the Lord, he's going to devour it. You don't give your eyes to the Lord, he's going to devour it. And what's really cool is we have a, an omnipresent God that just wants to be with us. Like he's everywhere all the time, but he chooses to just long to be with us. And he's jealous for our time. He's jealous for our affection. And it just, it's crazy because they're saying like, um, God made the garden of Eden to dwell in it. And then he made people to be with them in that garden. The guy who's everywhere all the time. Does that, it's just hard for me to wrap my head around. The guy who's everywhere all the time wants to be with me no matter what, every second of the day. He wants all of my attention. And he's certainly, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. So just to recap, um, let's try to be joyful this week. You know, there's a lot of, lot of circumstances where we can choose to not be joyful. We can choose to not be grateful. So this week, you guys, you guys have a choice. Like when I woke up in the morning, um, I felt like sick to my stomach. And then like I had a dream that my gas tank was on empty and like the gas light was on and I wasn't going to have enough gas to get to church and I didn't have enough time to get to church. And like I woke up and this watch is still on Florida time. So I'm like, oh, I'm, all, I'm way late. And then like I opened up my phone and then I'd... I'm, I'm going to text Rod that I I don't think that I should preach today. And it's just like, because my ga you know, gas tank was on empty and all that. And then I realized that I'm feeling anxiety right now. Jesus, I love you. I worship you. It's gone. <laughs> I'm ready to preach. <laughs> so it's just like we can we can, we can can choose what we feel. And it's just like, um, at work, we have this joke when we're really stressed out and it was just like, well, just quit, quit being stressed. It's a choice. Okay. Renew my mind. God, it's yours. Like, how do you, like, how do you fight that battle? Like I said last time, when, how do you fight your battle on your knees? But then the very week I had a battle and I didn't get on my knees. D does he come back with the head of the enemy or not? Does he, does he fight that? It's really funny because he's already fought the battle that you think you're going into. You're suiting up for battle. You're getting ready. I need this. I need that. And you come over the hill, and he's, he's already done it. He's already slain all your enemies. He goes before you. So what are we worried about on the back end of it? Why am I nervous? Why am I scared? Like when I, when I have to give a message, I, there's just this, just for full transparency, I just feel so unworthy. Like who am I? Like, and it's not like a humble unworthy it's like a gross unworthy where it's just like, I can't, I can't, I'm not, I'm not the right, you know, it's just like the devil trying to, trying to beat you up. And he beats, he tries to beat everybody up in a lot of different ways like that too. And he knows where you feel insecure and he's going to poke it. And then God says, I'm worthy. He knows that I'm worthy. 
I have to choose to be worthy. I have to choose to be holy. I have to choose to not look at impure things. Like I said, I was just in Florida and my one testimony in Florida, I'm just like, good night, people put on some clothes. Like every, like everywhere you're at in Florida, it's just like, a, I get it, the warmer, the weather's warmer and everything, but it's just like, oh my gosh. And then God brings me back to, if you would see my daughter, you wouldn't look at her that way. You wouldn't be frustrated this way. You would see my daughter and whom I love. And then that's like the way I had to renew my mind when I got there again. Cause I'm like, Oh, here we go back in Florida. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh wait, you've talked to me about this before. Wow. How, how, how soon I can forget what you've told me because I'm, I'm, I'm just, that's what happens when you're not with him all the time. You're just, you, when I'm left to think my own thoughts, I'm no good. I'm worthless. I have to be so heavenly conscious that I'm earthly worthless. Like the things of this world are worthless to me. I got to be I the, the world can't offer me anything. Like when, the, like during worship um, at, at a set, this, this guy was trying to get everybody to dance in the, in the thing. Cause it was just, it was pop and it was just good worship. And he's like, why aren't you dancing? He's like, why aren't you joyful? What are you afraid of your dignity? He's like, look to the person to the left, look to the person to the right. Did they die for you? no, Where's your dignity? The world didn't give you dignity. The world can't take it away. So when we're, we're found in him, we're not afraid to experience God in public. I can, we can all experience him in private. And boy, is it sweet. But it's really sweet. Like when I was watching these people in the airport and I'm just crying and just, just loving on Jesus. It's just like I get a chance to experience him all the time. And if I'm not worried about my dignity and how I look in front of other people because they didn't die for me. He died for me. And I just want to be with him. (laughs) And I just want to think about him and always just be present of him and not because you can so many times get taken away from and stifle the Holy spirit just by having that fear of man. What do they think? Are they looking at me? Like these thoughts shouldn't even be going through your head when you're, when you're worshiping, when you're ministering, when you're, when you're even just in your room, are my kids going to see me crying? Like, The best way you can love your kids is by showing them that you have a relationship with Jesus. You know, let them know I'm going in this room. I do it before they wake up, but they all know. But I'm going in this room and I'm going to spend some time with Jesus. Maybe leave the door open a little bit. Let them hear you loving on God because that's the way you'll teach a kid to go. As if they see your life honoring Jesus. My kids see me when I'm not at church. They see me when I'm not in public. They see me when I'm mad and I'm angry. They see how I treat them. Do they feel loved by me? You know, sure, I can have some bad days, but I need to show them the love of Christ in my whole life. Just like I said before, you have a marriage covenant with God, just like I have a marriage covenant with my wife. I love you today, tomorrow, richer, poor, sickness, health, forever, no matter the circumstance. You're my wife and I love you and I will always be with you. That's the same thing we have with Jesus. I love you. You gave your life for me so that I could be with you. You made yourself man and you knew before the foundations of the earth that you would give your life for me. I love you. I will love you more than just Sunday from 10 to noon. I love you more than on Wednesday from 6 to 830. I will love you more and more than my phone and overeating and gossip and social media, I will love you more than all of these things. So do we have that marriage covenant with Jesus like we do with our spouse? And then actually, maybe you don't have that with your spouse because you're supposed to love your spouse like Jesus loved the church. And I want to be found fit husband for my wife because she deserves it. She deserves to be shown the world because God said, I made this one for you and she's going to love you. And she's going to understand you. And there's nobody in this world that is going to understand and love you more than that person. So I'm going to give her to you, but you promise me you have to take care of her. You know that I will, Jesus. And then that's just our relationship with Jesus. I want this relationship with you, Jesse. Will you steward it? Will you move when I say move? Will you go when I say go? Will you love me even when it's tough? 
when you read this Bible and it says, be joyful, will you? Yes, Lord. And then when he says, he always says, this, do you love me? You know that I do. Every morning it's like that. Do you still love me, Jesse? You know that I do. All right, I'm going to pray. Jesus, we love you. We just ask you to, to touch our lives. I just pray that when we wake up, we hear that voice. Do you still love me? God, I ask you to help us be joyful in all circumstances. God, I ask you to help us see you in all the circumstances of our life. I ask you to excite first love and a longing and a burning desire to just be with you. That nothing else will do if you're not in it. I thank you, Jesus, that, that you're renewing our minds to how we can, we can better lean into you and not what we want to do. And I thank you, God, that what we want to do is what you want us to do because you put that desire in our heart, God. So I ask you to remind us of the desires of our heart, God. I ask you to dream with us in this season, God. I thank you that we are mindful of what we're planting in this season because we will be eating it in the next. And I thank you, God, that what we'll be eating in the next season is a bountiful bountiful harvest, God, of, of blessing and honor. I thank you for Church on the Rock. I pray that we can we can see that we're we're not soul winners, we're seed planters, God, and that we have success because you have walked into the room. And again, God, we, we, we don't just make room for you. We give it all to you. And we thank you that you honor this church for giving this whole house to you. We just thank you, God, for building this house. Because if you don't build it, we work in vain. And I thank you, God, that we are conscious of what you're building and how you're building it. And I just ask you to speak to us for strategies to better co-labor with you, Jesus. God, I ask for you to excite servant leadership in this church, God. I just, I just feel this right now. that I just ask you to excite servant leadership, God. I ask you to, to put capable people in capable spots, God, whether that's drawing new people into the church, a, a drummer, whatever it looks like. Um, I think we're going into a new season um, here where there's going to be an increase, God, and I thank you for that increase, that we will steward it um, very well, God, that we just declare that we're ready for what you have to come. And I just see all of us like strapping up, getting ready for battle, going over that hill, and he's slaying it all. So I thank you, God, that, that we are prepared to fight that we are prepared to love. But you go before us, and we know that there's no worry in it. There's no striving. So I just thank you, God, that you're going to speak to us and give us opportunities to plant seeds, God. I ask you this week that you, that you highlight times where we've planted seeds that, so that we, can, that we can build ourselves up and strengthen ourselves in the Lord and never grow weary in doing good. So, Jesus, I ask that you help us see opportunities where we can plant seeds. When somebody says something and you can say, hey, dude, I read something like that in the Bible. Like, help us bring up those opportunities. Help us to be bold to speak about something as simple as what we read in the Bible. God, I thank you that, that the world didn't give us dignity. It can't take it away. I thank you, God, that you're our dignity and that we will never, ever feel dumb or look stupid for, for talking about you, for dreaming with you, God. And I thank you that, that nothing is impossible, that there's these dreams and these things that we can set that you will overachieve on them. So I thank you, God, that you made us to love you and to love people. So I ask you to help us see people rightly, God. We just say that we want your eyes, God. Help us purify our hearts so that when we look at somebody, we don't see their circumstance. We don't see what they're dressed like. We don't see what they smell like, God. We don't see what they drive. We don't, we don't make any assumptions, God. I ask you to purify our hearts so that we only see a son and a daughter when we look at somebody, God. God, and I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you that we are able to forgive people in our life that have absolutely done us wrong, God. 
And if that's holding us back from loving people, God, we just cut that tie and we give it to you, God. Because it wasn't your plan for us to get hurt in that capacity. So I thank you, Jesus, that we are bold and we are beautiful lovers of Jesus. And I thank you that there's no one like you that can speak to us and love us like you do. I thank you that you set the table and we get to eat at it with you. There's going to be a wedding, and it's the reason I'm living, is to marry the lamb. We just love you, lover. We love you, Jesus. We love you, bridegroom. Thank you for speaking to us. And may it fall on good soil. We worship you, and we love you. Amen.